Good evening, folks. Thank you for joining us for tonight's Trying Family Web Series. We will get started in just a moment as we allow those from the waiting room to enter tonight's session. As folks are joining us tonight, I would just like to point out a quick reminder that tonight's session is being recorded. At any point tonight, if you have a question, please feel free to utilize the Q&A feature located at the bottom of your screen. You can ask questions at any time throughout tonight's session. We have staff on the back end that will be able to answer your questions offline. Uh, and we will also have a Q&A period towards the end of tonight's session. So again, please feel free to locate that Q&A feature located at the bottom of your screen and ask any questions you may have throughout tonight's session. All right. Well, without further ado, let's get started with tonight's Try and Family Web Series session entitled Find Your Celebration. Uh, tonight is going to be about commencement upcoming this June and specifically some of the amazing celebrations our community resource centers put on for our graduating seniors and their families. And we're going to talk about why they're important, how families can get involved and what those celebrations entail. Uh, and tonight is the first Trying Family web series for the winter quarter 2022. Uh, and we're very happy to have you joining us. And I would just like to introduce myself. I will be tonight's moderator. I am Dan Perez. I am the assistant director for the Office of Parent and Family Programs. If you've attended any of our virtual or in-person events over the past couple of years, uh, you may have seen me, you may have met me, uh, so if you all are joining us again, uh, I'm very happy to have you back. If this is your first time joining one of our sessions or, or attending one of our programs, thank you so much for taking the time out of your evening, morning, or afternoon, wherever you may be attending from, to join us in getting to know information about how UC San Diego celebrates your students' accomplishment in graduating from this fine university. And I am not alone tonight. I'm joined by two wonderful panelists. Uh, that would be Claudia Martinez, who is the Assistant Director for the Raza Resource Centro, and Kyler Nathan IV, who is the Facilities, Operations, and Events Coordinator for the Black Resource Center. So I will let them introduce themselves, say hi, before we continue with tonight's session. So Claudia, I'll start with you. Hi, all. Muy buenas noches. Claudia Martinez, she, her, and hers, and I'm the Assistant Director at the Centro. Very excited to meet you all virtually. Hello everyone, uh, Kyler Nathan IV, he him, his pronouns. Uh, as Dan mentioned, I'm the Facilities Operations and Events Coordinator for the Black Resource Center. Uh, also an alum of UC San Diego. I did my undergrad at UCSD and I'm currently pursuing a graduate degree at UC San Diego as well. Again, thank you two so much for joining us. Uh, and if you attended our homecoming session this past October, which was virtual, uh, entitled Cheers to Your Last Year. Uh, both Claudia and Kyler were panelists on that session as well. And so tonight we're going to dive into a little bit more deeply what the ceremonies that their centers put on are, how your students can register, how families can participate, um, and why it's important to the university that we have these commencement celebrations and how these communities come together to recognize the students that belong to those communities. Um, and also how you, the family, can participate in these sessions, why it's important to recognize your students' hard work graduating from UC San Diego, but also the role that the family plays and how these sessions also include families within the celebration. 
Um, so I don't want to hold up our panelists any further. And I think we're going to jump over to Claudia and talk about the Centro's uh, ceremony. So go ahead, Claudia. Thank you. So the Centro puts together the Chica Next Latinx graduation, or I just call it Shyla for short. So just to get the quick information out first, our graduation will happen on Friday, June 10th of 2022 at 3 p.m. We are actually, if I'm not mistaken, the first graduation event that kicks off the entire commencement weekend for UCSD. I didn't plan it that way. It just sort of happens. And we do this every year for our Latinx students on campus. Um, the majority of our students are first generation. They come from households where the primary language is Spanish. And they also come from mixed status families. And so having a graduation for our Latinx families, it's not just about the student, it's about the family itself. We know that when our students come to campus, they're not coming by themselves. You know, they bring along a whole family of support. We know that families are invested in their education and in their success. And so the event is not just about highlighting the student, it's also a way for us to congratulate the family in graduating from UCSD. And so the event is 100% bilingual. So I say everything in Spanish and the director will say everything in English. And when I say everything, I mean every single thing gets translated um, and it does not replace the main commencement. So this is an opt-in situation. So students who identify will get um, an invitation and or they can just go to our website, raza.ucsd.edu and they can find the information. I will also put it in the chat um the actual link for you to go and register but you do have to register um if you do not register we won't know that you want to participate and so this is open to all undergraduate students graduate students phd students um every year we get one or two phd folks which is very exciting because they're all usually the first you know doctorates in their families and so to see that on stage and to see them with their you know, their hood and the whole regalia and all of that, it's pretty exciting. And to see their families who have been there from the very, very beginning, um, you know, now graduating with, with a doctorate. Um, students who participate in this graduation will get the sash that you see right there. It is um, customized for UCSD. So it does say UC San Diego, it does say the year. And um, it's absolutely free, our event, is not of any cost to the families or the student. Uh, we do not want to put that burden on the families. It's completely unnecessary. We will take care of everything. And the other part is, um, so I'm Mexican, born and raised. And when I say my family is coming, I don't just mean my mom and my brother. I mean, like I'm bringing my tia, my tio, and like sometimes even like my mom's friend and all of that. Um, so when we invite folks to our graduation, there is no limit on how many people you can bring. So I have graduating students who bring up to 20, 30 people and we don't check. We're not going to give you tickets. There's nobody at the door. Um, and we also want you to make noise. You know, usually in some graduations, they're like, wait until the end um, so we can clap for everybody. In my graduation, I'm doing the complete opposite. I call out a name and then I encourage everybody to cheer. And then we'll go on to the next one. We have mariachi playing. We have like a whole like little salsa and, you know, some bachata at the end. All of the stuff that makes our event, our event for our Latinx community. Next slide, please. Now, this is the big uh, question that I keep having from students, and I just want to be brutally honest with you all, is as of right now, as of today, so what is it, February 3rd, um, we are planning for an in-person graduation. And I know that the picture that you see there on the left is like not that great, but that's usually what our event looks like. That's about uh, a little bit less than 2,000 people on the grass uh, area of the university, and we have the graduation there. And so that's what we're planning for. Um, and if there's any changes, we will let you know, and I have no control over those changes, the university will tell me. And the event that we have to move to a virtual graduation, we have hosted virtual graduations for the past two years. Those are also available on our website if folks wanna take a look. We still say every student's name, and we, um, we also ask the students to tell us how to say their names, by the way, I forgot to mention that. So if we're not sure of your name, we're gonna call you and we're gonna ask you to repeat your name multiple times. So sometimes students are like, well, I don't know if you're gonna say the Enye. I will say the Enye and I will say 
you know, anything with a tilde with a U, I will say everything correctly. So anyway, in the event that it's a virtual event, we will still go through the entire graduation and the students will get a package with the sash and the graduation program, which has their name and their degree printed. And so even during a virtual event, you still get something in the mail. And so uh, I posted the link in the chat. So if you wanna register, just go ahead and do that. It takes only like a minute or two and then I get the email and then we'll stay in touch with you. Thanks, Claudia. Uh, again, very excited for this event. And, um, you know, I'm going to keep believing that we're going to have all these events in person because they are so fun and we'll be happy to get back to those um, experiences. So, Kyler, I'm going to hand it off to you next. Thank you, Dan. Uh, so good evening once again, everyone, or good morning, afternoon, wherever you all are tuning in at. I uh, want to start off by echoing a lot of what Claudia said. You kind of just copy and paste that for the Black graduation ceremony. Uh, in that this is a Black graduation ex ceremony experience, emphasizing the Black experiences within our Black student community at UC San Diego. Uh, this year, the Black grad ceremony is going to be taking place on Friday, June 10th at 6 o'clock p.m., so three hours after Claudia's graduation ceremony, uh, with the intent that we know that there are students who identify as like Afro-Latina, and we want students with multiple identities to be able to attend whatever ceremonies they feel represented at. So similar to Claudia, we are planning for an in-person ceremony. Uh, fingers crossed that we will be able to make that happen. Uh, last June, we were able to hold the graduation ceremony for the class of 2021 in person. So hoping that we'll be able to give the same experience to the class of 2022. Uh, similar, this is open to students at all levels. So whether you're getting your bachelor's, master's, PhD, I welcome all students who are graduating to participate in the ceremony. And then throughout the ceremony, we'll be having remarks by some of the senior leadership on campus. Uh, usually the chancellor speaks, the vice chancellor for equity, diversity, and inclusion speaks, as well as different students, staff, and faculty representatives as voted by the graduating class. And then uh, you can kind of see it on the back of the student in the picture, but every graduating student will receive a kente stole. Uh, these are designed by a Black-owned business in San Diego, and we're happy to be able to provide these for free for all of our graduating students. Next slide, please. So Black Graduation Ceremony, the registration is open now. Uh, you can register on the BRC website, which is brc.ucsd.edu. But I will also put the link to the direct graduation page in the chat. Uh, we also have a frequently asked questions page. So for anything that I don't cover today, or uh, if you have further questions that aren't answered by the presentation, if you scan that QR code, you will get taken to the FAQ page as well as this linked on the link I placed in the chat. Uh, registration currently closes on Friday, April 8th, which is the first week of spring quarter. Uh, this is just to give us some time to be able to order the stoles for everyone, uh, make sure we have all of the awards in place. But of course, if there are students who miss this deadline, we will try our best to still have them participate in the ceremony, uh, but we just have this deadline to give ourselves some time for proper planning and make sure we're able to give our students the best experience possible. Next slide, please. And then lastly, just wanted to mention for uh, our graduating students, the BRC always hosts the Black Graduation Series, which is a series of events for our graduating students. Uh, the next event that we have coming up is actually a Black graduate student panel. So for any of our graduating undergraduate students who are interested in graduate school, uh, we'll be having several members of our Black Graduate and Professional Student Association uh, sit on a panel to talk about their experiences in graduate school, uh, just because we want to make sure that we're preparing our students to be successful even following the Black graduation ceremony. Uh, but just to give a few highlights of the ceremony before I close out. Uh, we start the ceremony usually in years when we don't have to deal with COVID, we are able to have food at the ceremonies. So depending on the uh, event planning guidelines leading up to the event, uh, we would love to be able to serve food again because it's a nice soul food buffet. Uh, but we weren't able to do that last year, but I'm holding out some optimistic hope that we'll be able to do that again this year. Uh, we usually have African drummers lead the procession of graduating students. Uh, like Claudia said, there's no limit to how many people can come to the Black graduation ceremony unless there's a restriction put on by the university because of COVID. 
uh, but we want to make sure that everyone can invite their aunts, uncles, cousins, uh, people that change their diapers when they grew up, whoever wants to come to the ceremony to celebrate the student achievement. And then yes, of course, we are celebrating throughout the ceremony. So uh, sometimes before the first thing even gets out, they see their student crossing the stage and everybody starts cheering, which is always magical just because these students have gone through so much to get to this point in their undergraduate career or graduate career. And we want to make sure that they receive as much love and celebration as possible. Uh, but that concludes Black Graduation Ceremony slides. I'll kick it back over to Dan. You're on mute, Dan. You know what? It was bound to happen with this being the first session. I guess I'm a little out of practice. Uh, so thanks for the heads up. But we're going to officially move into our Q&A portion of uh, tonight's session. So again, please feel free to utilize the Q&A tool located at the bottom of your screen if you have any questions. Uh, I will let everyone know right now, for general college graduation ceremonies that the university is putting on, that will be happening the weekend of June 10th through June 12th. That's why uh, the celebrations we spoke about tonight will start on June 10th. Currently, if you head over to commencement.ucsd.edu, bookmark that page. Information about commencement should be released later this month about certain times, days, and other details um, for your students' ceremonies. So I would bookmark that page. Again, it's commencement.ucsd.edu. I'm going to share it in the chat uh, because that's going to be the home of all the information for those seven ceremonies that will be taking place for the colleges. Um, well, maybe, yes, because Seventh College should have a, a commencement ceremony this year because it'll be maybe, I think, their first one. Um, so that'll be awesome. Uh, but all right, we're going to move into the Q&A. So again, please ask any questions. I do have a question from a parent, which is uh, either Claudia or Kyler, if you want to answer this is um, should my student participate in both ceremonies or do they have to pick one? You definitely don't have to pick. And this is why we try to have them at different times so that folks can participate in more than one. If this, is, if this um, relates to your identity and your community, then we encourage you to attend both of them. Um, I mean, the colleges also do their own. Some of the clubs and organizations do their own thing. And so whatever resonates with you and in your heart and in your own people, go for it. Yeah, and if I can add really briefly, uh, when I graduated from UC San Diego, I participated in three ceremonies, uh, Black grad, my college, as well as the all-campus commencement. And so I was having a great time at each of the ceremonies and um, just to hear the different speakers, to be with different groups that represented your college experience. I think it's a magical uh, weekend of celebration. And to be quite honest, you spend a lot of money to get this degree too, so I might as well get as much as possible out of it. No, that is great. Um, and that's a busy weekend if you're doing three ceremonies, but it's a lot of fun. And with the amount of work that students put in, I feel like they should be celebrating it as much as possible, especially during that weekend. Uh, another question we have is concerning the COVID switch or COVID precautions um, that we may have to take, is that if the ceremony is going to be in person, is there any chance it may be live streamed for those who may not be able to attend for a multitude of different reasons? Yes, I forgot to mention that. So when we have our uh, child at graduation in person, it is also live streamed through our website. Um, so I forgot about that. Yeah. So yeah, the answer, the quick answer is yes. Um, and all of that information will be on the same um, web page that I put in the chat. That will be your home for anything to do with my graduation. Yeah, same answer for Black grad as well. Uh, last year, we were able to live stream onto our website and be send that information out to all ceremony. Awesome. All right, I see this question that I can kind of field is, uh, do seniors need to do anything to let UC San Diego know they are ready to graduate or does the school already know? <laughs> Your student will have to not only uh, file for the degree, but if they want to participate in the main commencement ceremony, they do have to register for that. 
Um, and they'll receive those emails again, most likely starting this month in February. I know they'll start to come out early with reminders so that they know that they can plan to, one, if they want to participate in the main commencement ceremony, do that, but they'll also need to file for their degree. Um, I would recommend if your student is unsure what they need to do or have questions to reach out to their academic advisor. That's the best place to start because they're going to have the most detailed information for your student. Also, I've seen other questions about other ceremonies outside of um, the ones we've talked about tonight. Again, if your student is wondering if their college has a specific ceremony or um, are there other ceremonies that their programs may be involved in, uh, there definitely are lots of other ceremonies on campus. Um, so I would encourage your students to, if they're a part of a club, make sure they're asking the administrators or the exec board what they do to celebrate. I do know that Jacobs School of Engineering does a ring ceremony for their commencement ceremonies. So make sure that you're just having these conversations with your student now in February, because as Claudia and Kyler have talked about, registrations for these ceremonies are starting and they have deadlines. And so it's not thinking about commencement in May when it's coming up at the beginning of June, but really thinking about it now because you've got a plan and make sure that you can, um, your student knows that those are available. And then another question about details for commencement weekend. Again, those details will be released this month. Uh, the the all-campus commencement committee is working hard on finalizing those details in the schedule. And so again, that link that I posted in the chat, commencement.ucsd.edu is what you want to bookmark because those details will be released soon. I know it can be a little hectic, a little crazy, um, trying to plan travel for so many family members, especially if those are out of state or international. So I know that the university is working hard to release that information as soon as possible so that families can make the arrangements they need, such as travel and lodging, so they can come to campus and celebrate their students' accomplishments here at UC San Diego. Now, again, um, we've got a question about how many tickets will be allowed per student per ceremony for the RAZA and the BRC. Uh, as they've mentioned previously, there is no limit on those uh, that can attend to celebrate with their student uh, for main commencement. Again, that information will be released on commencement.ucsd.edu. Um, again, the reason why we're hosting these folks tonight is to highlight the amazing work that they do for their ceremonies, how they're inclusive of these communities, and how the students can start registering now for these ceremonies that are going to be taking place in June, and also what it means to celebrate in these ceremonies as well. And as I'm just double checking to make sure if we've got all the questions sorted, um, I think we can take one more, and that's about ordering grad items and, and invites and apparel. So this is more general. Uh, that's actually handled by the bookstore. And so if you head over to the UC San Diego bookstore, Dot com, uh, they have a grad central that you can pull up, check out, and that's how you can order all of those materials for your student. Um, so I'll drop that link in the chat, but actually as we come to a close on the Q&A portion, I can actually share that we do have a resources slide, and again, I will be sending out this PowerPoint as a PDF tomorrow with the recording so that you all will have access to these links. So we've shared some of these links in the chat tonight, um, but again, these are resources for all graduating seniors this year from UC San Diego that they would want to acknowledge. So we do have some other community ceremonies um, and recognitions for those graduates listed on here. Unfortunately, some of uh, these folks were unable to make it tonight to serve as panelists, but we wanted to still highlight that information. Um, and we do have those general links like commencement inquiries. There's an email address that students can reach out to. Uh, the commencement 2022 website, which is commencement.ucse.edu, and the bookstore website for Grad Central to get all of those materials, photos, regalia, everything your student may need as they're coming to celebrate their commencement here and their graduation from UC San Diego in June. And I also want to highlight some of the other resources that we've put together for graduating seniors or newly graduated UC San Diego Tritons. So through the Triton Family Web Series last year, we had two amazing sessions that really covered two topics that are great to know about for families of graduating seniors. Uh, one was once a Triton, always a Triton. This session covered 
how the UC San Diego Alumni Association provides resources and support and connection to UC San Diego students as they graduate and become alumni, and the reunions and ability to stay connected with the university, the participation they have, the, cere the, the different um, alumni communities that are available, the regional networks that are available to graduating seniors. So that is a session that we have recorded that's on our YouTube channel that's available to watch. And this slide has all of these sessions linked. So when I send this out tomorrow, you can listen to it as a podcast, watching your free time or share with your student because that information is still great and it still has opportunities for your student to look on how they can stay involved or get connected or be supported uh, by UC San Diego as they move into their next chapter becoming an alumni. Uh, also, a great panel of parents of recently graduated um, UC San Diego students was held last year, and that was the What's Next? Supporting Your Students, your students Journey After UC San Diego. So this session was a panel of parents of recently graduated students who either graduated in 2019 or 2020, discussing about how their students have been able to navigate the, the world outside of UC San Diego, what the world has looked like, especially in the pandemic for recent graduates, how the university has helped support those students as they've moved on, and the lessons learned by recent graduates. So I highly recommend checking out that panel. Again, that recording is hyperlinked on this slide and will be sent out tomorrow, uh, but you can listen to it, watch it on our YouTube channel. It's really great information. And again, as I mentioned, Claudia and Tyler did participate in our homecoming session that was held just in October that not only covered um, some of the information in a more brief um, style than they did tonight, uh, but it also included uh, pr presentations by the bookstore about grad night, grad central, how to get those materials for your graduating students. It also included a presentation from Student Financial Solutions on different charges, what to look out for, the different costs associated with the last year here, and need to notes for your students to update their billing address, um, and to look out for as they graduate and become an alumni, what's important to understand about what they need to do before they graduate. Uh, and also the Career Center and how the Career Center supports UC San Diego students in their final year, preparing for graduation, doing mock interviews, reviewing their cover letter and their resume, providing career advising, not just while they're still a student, but also after they graduate and become alumni and the support that they receive once they graduate from the Career Center and also covering Trans Connect, which is UC San Diego's own LinkedIn social network where students can connect with uh, UC San Diego alumni uh, in different professions, the way they can search and connect with those already in the field of indus the industry fields that they want to go into and start doing that now as a senior so that they, when they do graduate, they have more of an idea of what they're walking into in their industry or they already have built-in connections. So again, that session was great. Claudia and Tyler were part of the panel we had in October during our virtual family weekend. So that session is again hyperlinked and this will all be sent out tomorrow to all of you that have registered for this session. But if you want to go check it out now, it's currently on our YouTube, which is uh, found at UC San Diego Parents and Family uh, programs on YouTube. Again, everything will be linked in this session. If you would like to share this session or go back and watch it with translated subtitles, you can do that by following the directions on the screen, by going to our YouTube uh, recording that will be posted tomorrow, selecting settings, selecting subtitles, selecting auto translate. And then from there, you can select the language you would like to have this session translated into, and you'll get subtitles translated into any language that you would prefer to make this session more accessible. Also, we do have more Try and Family web series sessions coming up this quarter. So, for those of you of senior families, some things that are going to be great is going to be this last session, Why Mentors, Communities, and Campus Involvement Matter. I know your, your students may be coming up at their last couple quarters here at UC San Diego, but it is not too late to get involved. And it's not too late to find a mentor on campus and really connect with professionals, staff, or faculty as they wrap up their tenure here at UC San Diego. And then for those of you families who are not, uh, parents or family members of graduating seniors but are joining so you can get a head start on what's to come in your seniors experience here at UC San Diego. We've got two sessions coming up, a home away from home, which is going to discuss returning to living on campus or if your student's ready to live off campus, all that entails. 
and then to work or not to work as a first generation student. So that's always a question that we see from first generation students when they're coming into the university or if they've been here for a year or two, is it the right time to work and what that means to work on campus or off campus as a first generation student. All this information can be found on our website under our Try and Family Web Series page. And again, thank you so much for attending tonight. Uh, to stay connected with us, if you have more questions, you can feel free to email us at parents at ucsd.edu or call our parent helpline number that is listed on the screen. Or you can stay connected with us through all of our social channels, be it on Facebook and Twitter, Instagram, or again, the YouTube channel, which you will find all the recordings of all our virtual sessions. Again, thank you, Kyler. Thank you, Claudia, so much for coming back and joining and talking about how families and their students can get involved during their last year in your ceremonies that you'll be hosting. Uh, and again, thank you all for taking the time out of your day, your evening, your morning to join and learn more about how UC San Diego will be celebrating graduating seniors this year for 2022. And with that, I hope to see some of you all at our future Triumph Family Web Series. Thank you, and we'll see you soon.